Welcome to Termite Machine Works. My name is Keith. I'm back here with uh, this. Uh, this is a, a uh, this carbide grinder, they call it, but this has actually got the white stones on here, and this is for high speed steel. And I'm going to be pulling this off of this pedestal and creating a double mount, and we're going to mount a new grinder uh, parallel with it so that we can get in there and show you how to do some tool bit grinding. Now, basically, I came back here and I'll show you this is because. <clears throat> this one here is both the grinders are bought through MSC and this one here is made in Taiwan and I bought this one oh about eight years ago it gave me good life I mean it's still the original stones they do need to be redressed and I'll get into that but I want you to notice that you know this thing is nice and round you roll this over and these backing plates and everything else run really true on this thing and turn it on things nice and quiet no vibration, nice and smooth. Okay, now I'll go look at the. Uh, we'll go look at the new one that I just got that's going to mate up with this one. Now, here's the one that I just picked up. Actually, this is the second one that I picked up. I had to send one back. It came, it had a broken water cup uh, dispenser, and. Uh, it, it actually, I took it just like this, set it on the bench, and when I turned it on, uh, you could have put a saddle on it and put it in a saloon and, and uh, charged rides on it. Um, it, 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 it right side there, I, I didn't put an indicator on it. I just, I, I knew that it couldn't, couldn't be salvaged at all. It, it was, you know, they offered to exchange it, and I took the exchange instead of the return, and no, you know, all right. This is not extreme, but it is vibrating all over the place. All right, so now we got to go ahead and investigate, and we got to take care of that problem. And the reason why I had it up here is I was going to go ahead and pull this wheel off of here because I bought these are green carbide stones, by the way, and uh, they're for good for roughing carbides. This is a diamond wheel, and this one wheel right here costs as much as I paid for this grinder. But before I can put it on there, I have to have a true running disc. Now both of these are running out a little bit. This one here is not bad, but this one over here is extreme. Okay, she's almost slowed down to a stop there. And you can see how much she's moving back and forth. Give it a little bit more spin in here by hand. She's also, uh, she's really well balanced too. <laughs> because this, that, well, I don't know if you can see that on the edge there. That's, Like I said, not not putting a black eye on China. You know, I mean they're they're uh, they're doing that by themselves. Okay, <clears throat> we gotta pull this disc off of here so we can figure what's going on. Okay, let's see what she's running out here. Yeah, like zero there. Nineteen, It's like a die casting right here. I see some chatter marks and stuff there. It didn't seem to fit loose. It's kind of a funky key here. It's only a roll pin.
that just goes against a little piece of pipe there. What's up with that? I'm putting it on backwards here. Just wanted to see what this what that register right there reads out of that face that goes against that ring. That's reading like zero. The only thing I think it could be would be that little piece of pipe is not faced off just right. Turn this around. Okay, that's turning within two thousandths. It's on it's on, it's snug on here, but it's not tightened against that sleeve. So that sleeve, the secondary surface in there, is gonna be running off. And when you tighten them together, it's it's cocking. It's cocking this plate. Because even this rock isn't extreme here. That's like two, but as soon as I tighten this up, I run into this same problem with pump shaft sleeves. If your stack up isn't 100% straight in line, Back to the 18, 18, 19, actually a little bit less, maybe about 15. So somehow I got to get in there and get that sleeve up, pulled off of there. Okay, we went ahead and I think uh, 10 millimeter, yep. Alright, we're going <clears> to <throat> pull off this. That's actually this holds this is a guard on the upper part holds the cup and this holds your tilt table and your water tray and all that so this is basically just a casting for accessories they get put on after the wheels mounted <clears throat> now there's no paint here or paint here, so they actually, I think they, uh, I think they paint it when it's all together here. Alright, but that's no, never mind there. Now they almost drilled that all the way through. Why don't they drill it so you can remove it easy? Um, you know, I, eventually you are going to have to replace bearings or whatever, and you got to get this off of here to get the bearings out. Okay, we can't get that sleeve off until we get that roll pin out. And that roll pin is put into a blind hole. You know, when you do something like that, you're creating a forever circumstance. Now, I could, I could sand the top of that off and I can get this off of here. Um, but I, I plan on, you know, uh, friction would probably drive this but I would like to have something locating the key in that in that wheel there. So this is my plan and it's to take that center bore of that roll pin and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna drill through that and I just happen to have a piece of rod that's just slightly smaller than the 532 drill that I'm gonna drill in here and I'm gonna put it through the bottom I'm gonna cut a short piece of this and I'm going to take some silicon bronze which will join braze the top of this here. This is a heat treated spring steel roll pin. Um, in my past I've had good luck with kind of joining it that way. Um, and, and basically the heat will probably anneal or soften that uh, roll pin as well. Uh, hopefully not make it brittle right at the edge there. We'll be able to lightly tap that roll pin out and then we can pull that sleeve off of there so let's see if uh, my plan can work out or not I'm just freehanding this and I'm holding the wheel on the other side I'm 
All right, wasn't the sharpest drill. All right, and our rod kind of goes through there. All right, we're gonna go cut off a length of this rod. kind of clean and here's our little pin here we're just giving it some length there all right now we need to put the ground right on the shaft here and somehow I need to hold that all right uh, we went <laughs> We went in, uh, in the cupboard there, in the brazing cupboard, and uh, that's where we keep our favorite tool that we got back in the 70s there, a pair of hemostats. And we got it clipped onto the bottom, and it just happens to be the right length so that uh, it can hold that pin right at the edge of that uh, roll pin there. All right. mic here so let's just find a <laughs> the narrowest point here so we got 39 and a half there and about 180 from there we got 144 so if you don't have parallel surfaces on this when you tighten and complete put the compression against this piece here this plate is going to follow this surface right here because that's what you're tightening it up against. Okay, no matter how strong this shaft is, this shaft will also bow and flex uh, to compensate for the tension of this. So the biggest mistake and the reason why this is running out is because this sleeve is not parallel from end to end. All right, now we got uh, a couple choices. I look in there, and this is going against a. Um, shielded bearing just like those shielded bearings that I pulled out of the top of that Wilton uh, machine there um, right now they're running fine there's perfect bearings in there so do I pull this apart and change those out now well I you know I can I can get in there and change them out later so what do we want to do we want to face this off and give it a try or do we want to go ahead and make something that's right and give it some thought here. <laughs> <laughs> 